Well, welcome back to part two of our uh, container grown five gallon container grown uh, potatoes. And uh, what we want to do on this this part two series is I want to explain you know the five stages of growth as it grows along in the buckets and um, explain that diagrammatically and then we'll come in, you know in the house at the desk and then each each step of the way we'll come out and take a look at it physically in the bucket so you see what that growth stage looks like so you'll know what to expect along the way when you're growing these for yourself so hang with me we got some learning to do today together. We'll be right back. Okay, we're going to start our diagram on um, the, the progression of the five growth stages of these potatoes in our bucket. Now, if you'll remember back on part one of our video, we, uh, we used a five gallon bucket and we added four inches of soil on the bottom. And then we put our seed potato in right about the four inch level. And then we covered it up with soil six more inches deep. So. I have soil from the bottom of the bucket up 10 inches um, of soil and um, we have our little chit that was starting on our um, potato and it's ready to go so that's that's what we did on um, part one of the video okay today I want to continue what happened in that bucket so since we planted it and uh, I think it'll help you to understand what's going on inside the bucket below the ground while I'm um, while they're growing. The first stage that you go through is called growth stage number one is the sprout development. Now that chit that we had, we had several chits on each one, but I'm just going to show one chit. Um, these these chits they start to develop and they grow upward and they work their way all the way up until they hit the surface of that soil level and at that point you will see them emerge with some new leaves and what I call that right there I call that the green point this is for a determinate potato the, the potatoes that I planted out there were Yukon Gold and Pontiac Red and they're both determinate and the reason I selected determinate is because I'm, I'm, I'm only working with a five gallon bucket so I, when I fill it up the potatoes will develop from the green point down nothing will develop no potatoes will develop above this green point right here so always remember that and I don't want to put more than six inches on top of the seed potato. I don't want to fill it all the way up because if I get more than six inches, I have found that the seed potato is smothered and it actually starts to rot and I have to start over. Six inches seems to be about the sweet spot. So I stick with six inches. Now also what's happening down below this soil level is that seed potato is developing a whole bunch of little them little teeny roots all over it. It's working. So this is what happened in stage one until we hit to the green point. So let's go outside and um, let's take a look at the buckets and see what that green point looks like. Yeah. Okay, here's where we were talking about the green point. See how this potato has emerged right here? And you see how the ground bulged up and crumbled and started to poke through? You don't want to help it come through. You're tempted to come up and pick this right here and pull it apart and give it plenty of room. Don't do that. Just let it push its way and fight its way through because what it's doing while it's doing that is it's making its stem stronger and stronger. The cell's developing in that stem structure, fighting its way through that soil, which makes a better plant. So leave the, um, 
leave the soil the way it is just let them work their way through it and this is the green point this is what i was talking about from here down we'll develop taters there won't be any more taters above this point so that's what they look like take a good look and at, at these uh, potatoes where they're at growth stage one and then we'll be back in uh, in the days ahead and we'll take a look at the next stage okay we're going on to um stage two it's called the vegetative growth stage and what happens on this stage is um that stem that emerged from the surface down here it starts to grow right on up and we start to develop leaves coming out and from the leaf nodes coming out from the stem and these leaves grow all the way out the stem the plant grows all the way until it passes the um the surface of the the top of the uh the rim of the bucket and um what's happening down below is um we're starting to develop some roots that are coming out laterally and these are called stalins nice big ones that come out laterally like that and you're also getting a bunch of those little teeny ones coming off too like that but those nice thick ones that are coming off those are the ones that are going to create some nice potatoes for you so let's just use these right here these we'll call these our stalins okay there's our stalins so what's happening above the green point is we're developing leaves and branches and, and more stem and below the green point we're developing more roots and stalins so that's what's happening when you see this growth stage two now there's something i like to do when i get to growth stage two once i get past the bucket top of the bucket i like to come in and add in another level of soil and I bring it right up to here until it's about two inches below the rim of the bucket I add the soil into here now what will happen to those leaves that were below the surface when I buried them all they do is just die off and rot off it's not going to hurt the plant all those little leaves that were growing we just cover them up because what we have left is this stem and these new leaves that are above the soil level now when I get it up to here and I, and I add the soil I also want to add a little layer of mulch right there and then bring it up to the rim of the bucket now the reason I like to do that with that mulch or straw or leaves or whatever you have I usually use straw what that does is it keeps that sunlight from coming down and those UV rays penetrating down. I don't want that sunlight to get down in here and turn my um, potatoes that develop later, it'll turn them green. It does another thing is it keeps the hot heat off of this soil, keeps it from just baking it. So that it's a protection from the high heat. And it also retains moisture in the bucket so that these, um, these potatoes don't dry completely out so let's go out to the to the potato table and let's take a look at growth stage two and uh, we'll demonstrate how to add in the soil to backfill it and how to put in the mulch okay here's our plants like we talked about and you see how they've cleared the top of the bucket easily so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some fill dirt and I'm going to backfill and I start from the outside rim of the bucket and work my way in. Got to be very careful because these stems on these potato plants, they're real delicate. They break real easy. So you want to carefully cover them up. Very gentle. Okay. There you go. And I go from the outside I work in like this toward the center of the plants see and then once I got it in 
Then I take some mulch. And this is leftover mulch I had from my fall garlic. I saved it. And I'm going to use it again right around the top of this bucket. And that tucks it in really nice for the summer. Protect it from the really intense heat. And it also um, blocks the sunlight from coming down through. And it helps to retain the moisture. So there we go. We've got the um, buckets all um, finished out for the, for the summer. I don't have to do anything else to these other than water them. And uh, we'll be back in the days ahead and look at the next step. Okay, we got through stage one, stage two. Now we're going into stage three, which is tuber initiation stage. Now, what the plant's doing on the surface above the mulch on the part that you can see is you're going to see that stem com continue to grow and add on more leaves and more more um, foliage, and that plant's getting bigger and bigger. It's really a kind of a beautiful plant. I like the way the, the foliage looks on them. But this is what you see happening above the ground. But what's happening above the ground level, below the green point down here, is I'm forming little tiny tubers. And they're little teeny little things and they just are nothing but right on the tip of the Stalin. It's nothing but just a little baby pot future potato but it has developed those right there and um, it's going to grow later on in the later stages so right now when you see your potatoes continuing to grow continuing to grow continuing to grow then you know that you are getting ready to start forming these little tubers on the tip of your stalins now what i wanted to bring to your attention is this um let's just call these uh, these little tubers okay there's something you want to start to pay attention really close to when you start getting all this foliage you know this plant's doing a lot of things and it's going to need more water and everybody asks me how much do you water and how often do you water i'm going to um, demonstrate that outside but i stick my nozzle from my watering supply down into the bucket where I don't get the leaves wet. I just stick my nozzle in and I spray and I flood this until I see water standing up here where I know I got at least a couple of inches, two or three inches of water in it to where it can soak down. It'll soak down through this soil and eventually drain out the bottom. I don't want this bucket to be standing and saturated water because it'll rot the seed potato and it'll rot my tubers it'll rot my roots it gives me root rot problems and it also gives me fungus and mildew problems so i want this thing to be able to drain thoroughly and just water frequently and what i do is i water early in the morning i avoid getting the foliage wet by sticking the nozzle in i give a good saturation so it can soak down all that peat that we put in here will hold in and retain that water all day and let that um, stay moist but not dripping wet and saturated so it's good and moist and that'll hold it until the next morning and I come out the next morning and I'll repeat the process and I do that every day unless it pours down rain if it's raining then I don't mess with it but um, a lot of times even with the rain it really wasn't enough so I always make sure I do that early in the morning. That gives it time to dry out all day and not stay, stand in water and be wet all night. Now, that's the watering part I want you to, re, to remember. Another thing that happens when you get a lot of heavy foliage going is here comes the insect activity. It's starting to get the hot part of the summer and you're going to see Japanese beetles, hopefully not potato beetles, and you'll see various different insects coming around looking for all this fresh foliage. And what I use is 100% cold pressed neem oil and I will mix that up a couple tablespoons and a gallon of water and maybe a half a teaspoon of um, dishwashing soap and I shake that up in my bucket and I, I spray these leaves real good and I'll do that um, 
about every two weeks I'll come out and spray it down with that neem oil just to deter some of that insect activity so let's go outside and I'm going to demonstrate how to water and um, we're going to mix up some neem oil and spray the uh, foliage okay we just talked about growth stage three in the house on the diagram here it is out in the buckets take a look at the size of these plants how much they've grown from growth stage number two to growth stage number three you can see they're well above the buckets now very exciting time so uh, pan down here and take a look at what they look like Okay, one thing that people always ask me about watering is, how much do you water? Well, that depends on, on a few factors. How hot is it in your region and how fast is your evaporation? And um, what you wanna do is measure out so you know how much water you're actually putting in. What I like to do for me in my region in the climate that I live in, zone 8A in Newport News, Virginia, I like to put about at least a gallon of water in each of my five gallon containers. One gallon per container. And now how do I know how much water I'm putting in? Here's what I use. I use an extended length with a nozzle on the end. And if I use it where it's blasting like this, it blasts out my mulch and digs a hole and erodes a hole down around my plant, which is what I don't want. So I have a throttle on here. I can throttle that down see i throttle it down and slow it see how much easier it is now now how much am i putting in i get an empty five gallon bucket if you look right here and i and i time just by squirting in here how long does it take to fill this bucket about a quarter this is a five gallon bucket so if i got up approximately a quarter of the way you know that's going to be about one and a quarter gallons so if i time myself at the at the um at the desired pressure that i'm trying to give this thing so it's not eroding i got that set and then i time myself I, and i look at my watch i can tell oh it takes me one minute at that pressure to get one gallon in my container so that's how i remember that and here's how i actually do it instead of watering and getting the plant all wet the leaves you don't want to do that look right down here come up kind of close so you can see i like to stick my nozzle right in here see i stick my nozzle right down in there so it's not getting the plants wet the leaves and then i water from the bottom and i'll let that run for about a minute which is what it takes at that pressure that i'm giving it and it'll eventually give me one gallon of water in there so that I can soak it down and get a good soak on that bucket. So that's how I do that. And that's how much water I'm putting in, how long I'm watering it, and how I actually water it without getting the leaves wet. Because if you get the leaves wet every time, every morning, you're just gonna create uh, fungus problems and uh, leaf problems with your leaves. So try to avoid that. And I water every morning in my climate. I do it early in the morning, so it has all time, to, all day uh, to soak through the bucket and evaporate and get good and dried out where it's, the, the soil is still moist but not saturated. I don't want it to sit wet overnight. So I water in the morning so it has time to evaporate some. I come back in the morning and do the process again. Now, if it pours down rain, I skip a day, but usually the amount of rain that we get in our area isn't enough to get the buckets what they need. So I make sure that those, that soil is moist. So that's the watering part. Now let's step over here and let me show you about how to um, treat this stuff for insect activity. Okay, what I do for my insect activity on my potatoes is the best way to deal with insects is 
prevent it instead of trying to cure it. So if I can keep the insects from getting on there before they get started, um, that's the best way to go because it's very hard to get rid of them once they set in. Now on potatoes, you're going to always see something nibbling at the leaves. It's inevitable. It's unavoidable. Don't lose hope when you see something chewing on your leaves a little bit. So what I like to do is I use 100% cold pressed neem oil. I order this online and this is, um, this is organic so it doesn't hurt anything. Here's what I do. I take two tablespoons of the neem oil. I put it in my sprayer and I get me one of these nice big sprayers that I get. I got this one and I think I got it at Lowe's and it gives me plenty of spray and if I have spray left over from my potatoes then I, I use that on my other vegetables around the garden to prevent bug activity. Now I got the two tablespoons in here then I put about a quarter of a tablespoon of this just dishwasher liquid dishwashing soap because if I don't the oil will sit on, on the top of the water. It won't mix and sink. If you put this dishwashing soap in there, it breaks up that oil and helps it to mix with the water. So you're constantly having to shake your, um, your sprayer. So I put two tablespoons of neem oil, a quarter tablespoon of dishwashing soap, and then I put one gallon of water. Now let me fill this up with one gallon. We'll be right back. Okay, I've got it up to the the one gallon level, I've got one. You could actually make two gallons if you got a whole lot to spray. This is a two gallon sprayer. And I'm just doing one gallon today, so I put two tablespoons to one gallon. I pump it up, and this is a good spraying nozzle. If you look right here on this nozzle, you can see, am I in the picture, sweetie? Mm -hmm. Okay, see how it's got a 45 degree angle on it? This is good, because when I spray from the top, I can spray down, then I can turn it over and stick it in the plant and it sprays up underneath the leaves. That's where a lot of your bug activity is. 99% of it's underneath the leaves, not on top. So let's go over and spray the plants. Okay, we're out by the tater plants. And I want you to come up and look real close at the leaves of my plants and you'll see there's some activity on here. Come right here and look. See right here? Can you see where the bugs have been eating through that leaf? And you look over here, here's some more. Here's some more. So it's inevitable. They're gonna get on your leaves no matter what you do, but this will help slow it down. Okay, now I've got my, my nozzle. I got it in the up position. Nancy will come right down here close and show you. I stick this nozzle right down in here underneath. Can you see down there? Can you see? And see, then I spray up. <laughs> see how I'm spraying up? Mm -hmm. That's how you want to spray, okay? Once you get the inside sprayed thoroughly, you want to spray it, I spray it until I have runoff. I spray underneath real good and give it a good old squirt. Then when you come out and you got the underside done, then I come up on the top, I do the easy part, which is nothing more than just spraying the top of the leaves. And once I have it sprayed underneath and on top, that right there with that neem oil, that'll last me about a week. So if I can last about a week with one uh, application, that's good. If you already see bug insect activity like you see here do it one day come back three days and do it again then do it at the seven day mark and then uh, keep doing it every three days three or four days until you don't see any more activity and then just do it once a week that's how we take care of it with the neem oil and it's not going to be a hundred percent but it's better than nothing so start using the neem oil and make sure it's 100% cold pressed neem oil. You'll probably have to buy it online. Okay, we'll be back uh, in a days ahead and we'll go when these plants get to stage four. We'll look at that one. Back shortly. Okay, we're entering into stage four, which is really a very exciting stage. What you're going to see happening above the ground is the first time you'll see something that makes a big difference and you'll notice it right away is this stem will continue to grow. And suddenly, 
as it's growing and putting on more foliage, you'll see blooms appear. And these flowers are um, growing on the very tip and they're not very big. They're pretty small flowers and they're kind of pretty. Um, I, I, was, I especially like the um, Pontiac red flowers. Or, but anyway, when you see these blooms going on, that's what you see happening above the soil level. But what's happening down below is even better. All these little tuber cells that were on the ends of these Stalins, they begin to expand and they turn into potatoes. They get bigger and bigger. Now, that's an exciting time. When you see the blooms, then you know you're getting potatoes. And one of the reasons that I added this extra soil up here to give it some more protection is as this tube, this uh, potato right here is swelling up, it causes that ground right there just above it to get kind of a little bit of a bulge. And it'll even have little cracks come down through that bulge. And what happens is that ultraviolet light, if it, if it doesn't have any soil on here, that ultraviolet light can go right through that crack and it hits your potato and sunburns it and turns it toxic and turns it green. And you can't eat a green potato cause it's you know poisonous to humans. Never eat a green potato. So this is what we add this extra soil on here is as these tubers are swelling from this green point and the ones on the top bulge up a little bit, I have extra soil to protect them plus the mulch. So I have two extra layers of uh, defense against that ultraviolet light. So there we go with stage number four. We're getting close to harvest. So we'll, let's uh, go outside and take a look at what this uh, growth stage four looks like out on the buckets. Okay, we're out here to take a look at the taters. We just talked about stage four. Here they are in stage four. So come on up kind of close and look at these. You can see right here, the blooms. These blooms are a few days old, so they're already starting to fall off. And you can see like right here, there's more blooms coming. So they are just going into stage four. And these are the red Pontiac, they're Pontiac reds. And if you look over here, here's the Yukon Golds. See, they don't have any um, bloom showing yet. You can come around over here and look kind of close. You can see right down in here, you can see new blooms trying to form. See them right there? So they're just a little bit behind the Pontiac Reds, but they're coming. But so these are, um, they're moving along and we'll be back in the days ahead and we'll uh, look at the next stage as soon as it gets here. So we'll see you soon. Okay, growth stage five. Growth stage five is, mu is maturation. The plant is fully mature and you will start to see the leaves start to turn yellow and start to lose some of the leaves. They look like the plant looks overall sickly looking. You'll see all the all the flowers will die off. They won't be in, there won't be any flowers left. You'll see some of the the leaves start to fall. You'll see the plant droop, look wilt looking, look pale and yellow and um it looks like the plant has some kind of a disease. Really all it's doing is it's done what it's going to do and um it's just about time to harvest those potatoes. So that's what you see above the ground is you see the end of your potato plant. But what's happening down below is the potatoes have gotten as big as they're going to get. So at this point, what they're doing is developing skin. That's uh, really a very fragile skin, but it does cover the potato in a skin. So um, we'll wait for this plant to completely go completely down really rough looking and um, we'll go out there and uh, we'll harvest them at that point so let's uh, go outside and look at what the plant looks like in this growth stage number five and that way you'll know what to expect and not be shocked when you see your plant looking like that 
Okay, here we are out here at the taters, and this is the late stage uh, five for these uh, containers, and I want you to take a look. So that's what I was uh, trying to emphasize to you because a lot of folks get confused and, hey, is this ready to harvest or not? Because it sure looks at, it's wait till the late stage like that, and when the things look pitiful, it's probably the first time we actually look forward to one of our plants looking like that. That's a good thing. So we'll be back in uh, the days ahead and we'll do a harvest video on these four containers just to show you what they finally look like. And um, we'll put that video out in a couple weeks. But we hope that you've enjoyed this series on how to grow these potatoes and understand the five stages a little bit better. Um, you know, growing them into buckets and we appreciate you watching. And if you like our channel, we always ask you, please subscribe, be a part of our YouTube family, join us on Facebook, follow us on that social media as well, and just uh, be a part of the family. So until we see you next time, always remember where all our taters really did come from, came from the Lord. So by his hands, we are fed, give, give us Lord, Lord our daily bread. bread. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day. Thanks for watching our videos. We really love making them. If you like our videos, please like our Facebook page to get the latest tips and tricks. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to get the newest video. Like it. It would really inspire and encourage us. But most importantly, share it to encourage others. We'll welcome your comments and questions. Thank you. Have a blessed day.